When I was a kid between 6 and 10 years old, my mom found a box of her old comic books, and it was filled with a bunch of titles, some that were familiar to me, and others I had never heard of. But there were a few that had obviously been read above the rest, cover nearly falling off, pages a bit tattered, worn edges. And when she saw them, her eyes lit up, and she stopped and, and pulled them out, and that was the first time I ever heard of Archie. Now many people know the story of John L. Goldwater, the author of the Archie comics, and his hitchhiking experiences across the states, flings with various gals, and how he eventually settled in New York and began working for MLJ Magazines, later renamed Archie Comics. But not a whole lot of people know much about the town that John Goldwater cited as his inspiration for Riverdale, the town where he worked as a writer for a local newspaper, the town I grew up in, Hiawatha, Kansas. <laughs> The character of Archie Chick Andrews debuted in 1941 in Pip Comics issue number 22. Archie and his friends spent their time learning how to navigate life through problems that would arise in each new issue, all in front of the backdrop of their hometown Riverdale. There was nothing grandiose about these stories, and in fact they were written for the fans of the Andy Hardy movies, which also depicted everyday small town life, but they quickly began gaining popularity. After the initial print of Archie, it didn't take long for the stories to begin outselling other comics, printed by then MLJ magazines, which led to the company taking on the name of its most beloved character in 1946. John Goldwater, Vic Bloob, and Bob Montana created characters and an environment that drew people in. How is it that in the midst of larger-than-life superhero stories, what captured so many people was an average red-headed boy, his average friends, in an average small town navigating simple scenarios? To answer that question, I believe we must first look at the state of the world during this time period. American citizens watched as Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, effectively beginning World War II. And then two years later, on June 22nd of 1941, he invaded Russia. As this all happened, the United States watched from an arm's length, but mounting pressure to join the war had Americans on their toes. Then, on December 7th, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and the United States finally entered the war. As all of this was happening, MLJ magazines began to push their patriotic superhero the shield. But something happened they weren't expecting. Less than a month after Pearl Harbor, Archie debuted in Pep Comics issue number 22 and became an almost immediate sensation. You see, people were going through a very rough time, and Archie Comics offered them something that the real world couldn't. Consistency, simplicity, and overall wholesome environment. It's easy to see how these traits appealed to a generation that saw both the Great Depression and World War II. Within a year of his debut, Archie got his very own series, in which people fell in love with the various characters, and of course, the town of Riverdale. Riverdale was a little town that uh, the, everybody knew everybody. The environment was safe and you could spend time with your friends and not feel threatened. Riverdale was a prime example of stereotypical small-town America. Unlike busy New York City, where Goldwater grew up, Riverdale was a simpler place, the perfect environment for Archie and the gang. But this town didn't just live in the comics. It was inspired by a real place, Hiawatha, Kansas. I first came across um, information on Goldwater when there was a question on Jeopardy about what town was his um, was Archie's comics based on, and it came up as Hiawatha. My hometown of Hiawatha is a small town in northeast Kansas with a population of a little under 4,000. It was staked out in 1857, and B.L. Ryder was credited for naming it after Henry W. Longfellow's poem, Song of Hiawatha. By 1910, the town was beginning to boom as the railroad was laid, and continued to grow in size until the derailing and movement of the Grand Island Railroad. It is speculated that had this not happened, Hiawatha may have become a metropolis. The scope of how large the community is today is vastly different than what you would have seen in early 1900s through the 1940s. So Horton, Kansas, which is located 12 miles south of Hiawatha, Kansas, 
they projected with the Rock Island Railroad would have been the equivalent of a Chicago. They have not said or I have not heard what Hiawatha might have become, but it is evidenced in just how big and grand the town was by the buildings. It was sometime around the 1920s or 1930s, as Hiawatha was hitting a period of rapid growth, that Goldwater stopped in town and became part of its history. Well, one of the reporters working for me at the time, Patty Moore, she started doing some research on him and found out that he had actually worked at the Hiawatha World. So she put together a nice article, which actually, I mean, it got lots of shares. We, we gave it to lots of different organizations and lots of people still ask for it. So that was kind of my first inkling that we were kind of famous for that. Apparently, Goldwater claimed he got into a scrap over a girl and was then fired from the Hiawatha Daily World. He left soon afterwards and moved to Kansas City, then Arizona, then San Francisco, eventually ending up back in New York, where he began exporting periodicals for sale in other countries. This led to him meeting his future business partners, Louis Soberkleit and Maurice Coyne, and the rest is history. But even with all of his travels, it was Hiawatha that became the basis for Riverdale. So what did he see that made him use it as a poster child for small town America? A week after we moved here, I needed a new pair of dress shoes. And where now City Hall is, uh, there was uh, a bit of bank there. But at the time, in 1982, there was a shoe store there, the kind of shoe store where the man measures your foot and puts the shoe on your foot and ties the shoelaces. And I just started my job, and I told Bill, Bill, I can't, I can't afford to buy these today. Could I come back next week after I get my paycheck? And he looked at me and said, no, don't worry about it. Just take them. Pay me when you get paid. And so I walked out with a new pair of shoes, and I thought to myself, that would never happen in Kansas City. That would never happen any place else but a small town like this. It was the, the relationships between all of the people here and how we we have interacted for for years and we know each other and there you just don't really know a stranger in the time frame that he was looking at hiawatha was the center of of northeast kansas and it was a bustling small town of of maybe four thousand people it's just like a family here and i think that's what he probably noticed as an outsider probably even more Goldwater left Hiawatha in the 1930s, and in 80 years, not much has changed. It never became a big city, never got much recognition for being the basis of Riverdale, and still has a population of about what it was back then. But the kindness of the people, the sense of community, and the hometown pride is still alive. You know, many businesses are gone, many faces are gone, um, but there's still a solid core he here that keeps the community alive. It keeps us as a family where we do see people on the street and we are familiar enough with them, we say hello. It's still a town that you can go to the high school and everybody knows you at the high school. You can go watch a ball game. Everybody knows you, you can walk down the streets. You don't have to worry about locking your car. It's a small community. It's a, it's a large, small community, let's put it that way. You can still go out to the farm and home and say, you know, I need to borrow a tiller, and they say, oh, just take it. We'll fill out the paperwork when you get back. The people are still interested in each other. And just being able to walk downtown and see familiar faces, and you give a wave, you give a hug, and you know that you're home. This is home to me. I really think that um, we have a little bit of Riverdale in Hiawatha yet. I hope that never changes. <laughs> <laughs>